You know, experience is the best teacher, but there are some lessons you just don't want to learn that way. I'm going to start this one with a story. So this happened to me about 20 years ago. I had a buddy of mine, he buys a car off of eBay. It's like a 1926 Buick. This is just this huge, giant locomotive of a car and enough spare parts to probably build it a second time over. So time comes to pick up this car and his wife is sick and he can't make the run. So he calls me up and he says, Tommy, could you do me a favor? Could you take my truck and trailer and run up to Ohio and grab this car for me? I went, yeah, no problem, man, I got it. So I go to his house and I pick up his truck and trailer. And so it's like a mid eighties F-150 and like an 18 foot double axle trailer. So I take his rig and I run up to Ohio and we load this car and all of the parts onto the back of the trailer. And this is just this huge mound, this cattywampus lump of steel all packed onto the back of the trailer. I don't think anything of this. I'm just gonna drive it home. So I start on my way back. And now it's like the middle of the night and it's pouring rain and I'm on the interstate. And I'm coming along on this section of road, slightly downhill with a turn to it. All right, and they got the two lanes that I'm in, and then you got the opposing lanes with like a grass ditch median in between us. So I'm driving along, and just as I enter this turn, the truck feels a little weird, feels a little light, right? So I start to like just intuitively counter steer, but it's not helping, it's, it's getting worse actually, right? So as it's getting worse, I realize, okay, now we're, we're really swaying, and I had never encountered trailer sway before. So it's really starting to sway. I don't really know what to do. So I did the instinctual thing to do, right? Hit the brakes, bad move. Okay, now all hell breaks loose. Now the slight swing turns into this violent swing. And this thing is all over the road. I'm taking up both lanes. It's I'm out of control. I'm steering, I'm braking, I'm, and I'm out of options. And here comes the median, okay? We're going into the ditch. So I did the, took the only option left, brace for impact. So I dove between the seat and the dashboard, kind of covered my head, closed my eyes, and just waited for it to hit something. But it never hit anything. It just kept sliding along, just kept sliding along on the wet grass and spinning around, and, but it never hit anything. You know how when you have an accident, it, it, what takes just a couple of seconds, it seems like hours. So after I'm sliding for a bit, I decide to look up and see what's going on, and I look up and I see out the window, just as I'm passing this sign, you can't make this up, you can't make this up. I'm just passing this sign that says, Site of Fatal Bus Crash, 1957, whatever it was. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So this slide continues on for what seemed like hours, but it was just probably another few seconds, and everything comes to a stop, and we're okay. Didn't hit anything, didn't flip over, right? All good. So I gather it all up and I drive the rest of the way home really, really carefully. But that was my first experience with trailer sway. And it's something you never forget. It's, it's, it's like death wobble. It's something you just never forget. So I said, you know what? I'm working on this Jeep XJ. This is our, our experimental XJ tow vehicle. I know, terrible idea, but we're, we're hedging our bets and I'm about to hook up the brake controller on it, trailer brake controller. So he says, you know what, this would be a good time to do a video, a general video on trailer towing, trailer safety, the stuff you need to know, the basics to keep everything shiny side up and out of the ditch. Because, you know, we've all seen those dash cam videos where somebody's towing down the road and the trailer moves out a little bit and then the tow vehicle moves out a little bit and the next thing you know, this sliding all over the place, they're up on two wheels, spinning around, going into the ditch. Yeah, you don't want to let that happen. So I want to cover so many important bases that you need to know. Because even if you're not currently towing anything, at some point you're going to end up having to load a car or load whatever it is onto a trailer and drag it down the road. So knowing these things going in could save you a lot of aggravation, a lot of grief. Now before I get into all of that, let me give you just a quick update on this thing. So the last time you saw it, we had it all apart. We dropped the front end two inches and threw a fresh set of brakes on there. All the front end components are solid, really nice shape. So the next step here is to take this thing in for an alignment. 
And when we do that, we're going to drop, we're going to put about 400 pounds into the back of this to simulate the tongue weight of the trailer. Now, this is going to be a dedicated tow vehicle, so I don't care how it handles when it's not loaded, but I do care how it handles towing the trailer. So we'll have it aligned with the weight in the back, and this way it'll, it'll be at the same attitude that it's going to be as it goes down the road towing a trailer. A degree or two in this situation can make a, a big difference. Also, we had the motor apart, she had a blown head gasket. We changed the head gasket, engine runs great. AC compressor was making a racket, so I figured let me swap that out now so it doesn't leave me stranded on the side of the road with a toss belt. Uh, so I'm just waiting for the compressor to come in and that'll be that. The only other thing I'm gonna do to this for the time being is I'm gonna add a vent to the hood. Uh, there are several different options. Still haven't decided which one I want to go with yet, but we're going to add a vent to the hood because these four liters are prone to heat soak and vapor lock. Because it's a deadheaded fuel injection system, or in other words, there's no return line to the tank. So when these things get hot, they boil the fuel in the injectors and in the fuel rail. And when that happens, she stops. So that's about the only thing I'm going to do to this for the time being. And today, I'm going to hook up this trailer brake controller. And I'm going to talk about trailer brakes and trailer brake controllers in a little bit. But first, let's talk about trailer sway, because that's the thing that will get you in trouble. So what is trailer sway? All right. Trailer sway is a very odd dynamic. Okay, now you have to wrap your head around this. The tow vehicle and the trailer are heading down the road in the same trajectory at the same speed. Now, if something happens to upset the trajectory of the trailer, it changes the speed of the trailer. Now, the thing that, could, that upsets the line of the trailer, the trajectory of the trailer, could be a gust of wind. It could be a gust of wind from a passing 18-wheeler. It could be a bump or an unevenness in the road. It could be an evasive move, maneuver that you make. Um, it could be really anything that sets up trailer sway or knocks the trailer out of line. But once the trailer is knocked out of line, two things happen. As the trailer moves out of line, remember it's not powered, so when it moves out of line, it tugs back on the tow vehicle, so it reduces the speed of the tow vehicle. Even an imperceptible amount, just like one mile an hour, makes the difference. So as it moves out of line, it tugs back on the tow vehicle. Now, when it swings back to go in line again, it's actually going faster than the tow vehicle. Remember now, it had to cover more ground when it was off on, you know, out of line than the tow vehicle did. And so it's actually moving faster as it swings back. So the tow vehicle gets tugged back, the trailer gets nudged forward, and because the weight is shifting around during this period of time, the tow vehicle is subjected to be knocked off of its trajectory from behind. Now it starts off at just a couple of degrees, but when this happens two or three times, it starts up a cycle and then an oscillation, and then eventually this violent whipping that you really have no control over. That's what trailer sway is. Now, unfortunately, there's very little you can do to prevent these things from affecting the trailer. You have no control over the weather, you have no control over the roadway, you have no control over things that get in your way. So there's really not much you can do to prevent the outside forces from acting on your trailer. But there are things you can do with your trailer to make sure that those forces are minimized and they don't drag you out of line and start that oscillation. So let's go out to the trailer real quick and I'll show you two important things, maybe three important things to look out for. So the first and most basic thing is tires. Trailer tires are constructed differently than car tires. Trailer tires have a stiffer sidewall and generally have a bit of a crown to the tread surface. So the sidewall is important here. The sidewall is how the steering of the trailer is absorbed. So, all right, picture this now. So here's a standard trailer, okay? But picture this axle being all the way back here 
and this axle being all the way up here. Now, in order for this thing to make any sort of turn, if the axle is up here, if the front axle is at the very front of the trailer, it would literally have to drag the tires sideways across the pavement in order to make a turn. Now, that actually happens at very low speeds with sharp turns on a trailer, where it'll just drag the tire across. But as you're going down the road, their location towards the back of the trailer and their proximity together means that instead of dragging, it'll just flex the sidewall. The sidewall has to flex back. So the construction of these things is very specific. That's why you can't use car tires on a trailer. You notice you go down the road, you always see trailers off on the side with blown up tires. Those are usually car tires because the car tire, the trailer tire is always flexing. The sidewall is always working. The car tire isn't designed to work quite that way. And so they overheat, they separate, they come apart. So that's like the first thing. The second thing is how you balance the load on the trailer. We're talking about cars now, right? So let's just stick in the world of cars and, and light trucks. How you position it on the trailer has a lot to do with how stable the thing is going to be. So the center of gravity of the car that you're going to tow or the truck that you're going to tow has to be someplace between the front axle and the trailer hitch. So basically, any place in this area is where you want the center of gravity. How do you find the center of gravity of your car? Well, the ballpark rule of thumb is that the center of gravity on just about everything we deal with is going to be right about here. So if you're seated in the truck, car, whatever, where your knee is, is generally the center of gravity. So you want to have that someplace in this zone. The further forward you put it, the more tongue weight. Now you have to get into things like load distributing hitches. The further back it is, the less stable the overall package is going to be. So you want your center of gravity basically to be someplace right there in the middle between the front axle and the trailer hitch. And generally speaking, with this type of trailer and the type of cars that we pull, it's where you would normally put your car. What you don't ever want to do, unless it's absolutely necessary, is tow a car backwards, especially when it's got an engine, a complete car, because that puts the center of gravity back here, behind that front axle. So when your center of gravity is here, or even worse, here, any upset to the trailer's trajectory will cause a pendulum effect. That weight is going to want to is going to want to drag the trailer further in any direction opposite of where it's supposed to go. Ask me how I know that's a really bad thing to get involved with. Anytime you have to load a car on a trailer backwards, make sure that you've brought it as far forward as possible. The center of gravity, I'm telling you, behind that front axle. Even if you have to weigh the front of the trailer down in order to move that gravity back, do it because that will get you in a lot of trouble. So two of the things to consider when placing a load on your trailer. One of them is tongue height and the other is tongue weight. So as far as height goes, the trailer should always be level to slightly nose down, no more than just a couple of few degrees. Or basically, you never want a situation where the hitch is pulling up on the ball. So it should always be level to slightly nose down. Now, as far as weight goes, the ballpark figure for that, 10% of the overall weight of what you're pulling. So let's just say the combined weight of the, the trailer and the load is 5,000 pounds. You don't want to exceed more than 500 pounds at the tongue. I, I know, you're not going to pull out scales and start measuring things out. You have to ballpark it. But that's it approximately 10% of the overall weight on the tongue. And that's where the tow vehicle rating comes in too. You have to make sure that your tow vehicle is rated or capable of maintaining that 10% weight. Now, if the loaded trailer attached to your tow vehicle affects, noticeably affects the ride height or attitude of the tow vehicle, that's where a load distributing hitch comes in handy because you need to try to maintain level. Now for all of the, the various systems, for the brakes, 
for the suspension, for the steering, for everything to work right, the tow vehicle needs to maintain a, a relatively level attitude. So, like I said, if, if you notice there's a real dip in the rear, at that point, load distributing hitch. All right, so now that's the trailer. Let's talk about the trailer brakes, trailer brake controllers, because you can't really understand trailer brake controllers unless you know how trailer brakes work. So the trailer brake is the most brutally simple device there is. All right, so a trailer brake is essentially a drum brake, exactly as you'd find on a car or a truck, simple, old school drum brake. So the difference is on a regular drum brake, they use hydraulic pressure through the wheel cylinder to apply the shoes. On a trailer brake, it's done with a magnet. So you've got the regular setup, you've got the two shoes, and between the two shoes, there's a lever and a magnet. And the magnet follows in close proximity to the drum. So now when you apply voltage to the magnet, it tries to follow the drum. When it tries to follow the drum, it pulls on the lever, moves the eccentric, and applies the brake shoes. Beautifully, brutally simple. But like I said, you can't really understand controllers and what they do unless you know how the trailer brakes work. All right, so now let's talk about controllers. So now before we get into the actual controllers, I have to mention something about the newer vehicles and their stability control systems. Almost all of them have a trailer towing setting. And the idea is when it's on the trailer tow setting, it'll prevent sway. And it can, to a certain degree, it can pick up minor discrepancies in the attitude of the tow vehicle and the trailer and strategically apply the brakes to even things out. So yeah, it's, it's a, you're hedging your bet with that, but it by no means takes the place of an actual trailer brake controller because those stability systems don't have any way to actuate the trailer brakes. For that, you need a separate controller. So this is a false sense of security with those things. They do work to an extent, like they're, they, they hedge the bet in your favor, but they're not the end-all, be-all. You still need a separate controller. Now, the number and variety of trailer brake controllers on the market today is absolutely mind-boggling. They have them with all sorts of features. They have Bluetooth ones. They have ones that are wash your socks and order you a pizza. But the one I chose for the Cherokee is the most simple, basic controller there is. And it has one important feature, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. So, to understand trailer brake controllers, the best way to understand trailer brake controllers is to understand their wiring. Because they're all a very basic four-wire hookup. So of those four wires, you've got your positive and your negative. And it's suggested that they get wired directly to the battery, or as close to it as you can get. And the reason for that is that you don't want any other electrical system in the vehicle affecting the braking system. Makes sense. The third wire gets hooked up to the brake light switch. So the brake light switch, the signal from the brake light switch, is what tells the controller, it's time to go to work. And then the last wire is the one that goes directly to the trailer brakes. And then for that, you need a seven pin connector. The, the four pin connector that just controls the lights doesn't have a provision for trailer brakes. So you need the round seven pin connector for that. All right, so like I said, there's a countless variety and, and number of these things out there. So you'll have to do your own research to figure out which one is going to work best for you. I'm going to tell you which one I chose, why I chose it. All right. I chose it because I want direct, I want my direct input on the trailer brakes. So all trailer brake controllers have a sensitivity, a way of setting sensitivity of trailer brakes. And that's because the effectiveness of those brakes, loaded and unloaded, are two different things. So when there's no load on the trailer, you don't want to send too much voltage to the brakes because it'll cause them to lock up. When the trailer is all loaded up, you need a lot of voltage to the brakes in order for it to have an effective braking power. And so that's done through this sensitivity dial on this. It's done automatic through other controllers. But like I said, you have to do your own research and see which one works. I want to have direct control over the sensitivity of the brakes, so I have one with a simple manual dial. Now, as far as the one feature that I look for in a trailer brake controller is this right here, my oh shit knob. 
All right, so what this thing does is it overrides the calculations made by the controller or the sensitivity button, and it allows me to apply the trailer brakes directly without touching or affecting the brakes of the tow vehicle. So when you pull on this one here, you're only applying the trailer brakes all by themselves. And if you're in a sway situation, this will pull you straight. You have to be really almost to the point that you're sideways on two wheels before this thing won't work. So choosing a controller, I would recommend that you pick one that has a very prominent, very easy to use manual override. Now where you position the controller is important too. I see people put them in all different places and they even market them where the controller is kind of like hidden and it just has like a, a readout that you put on your dashboard. Yeah, that's not control, okay? Where you position this is really important. Since you have this override feature, uh, on this one at least, it has to be positioned where you can reach it instantly. That You don't have to go looking for it, you don't have to go fumbling around, you don't have to reach underneath the dashboard, and this should always be positioned within direct reach of your right hand because your left hand is busy steering. So you can't have it where you're gonna be fumbling around and reaching and looking and it has to be one of those things where you don't even think about it. I'm mounting this one because this is like an experimental deal and I'm not really sure how stable it's gonna be. This thing is getting mounted literally right on top of the dashboard to the right of the steering wheel. So that this way, as soon as I sense that there may be any type of sway setting in, I can right away reach over to my manual slide there and pull things back into line. So where you position it does count. There's a lot to think about with all of this stuff. It's not as simple a topic as, as it appears on the surface. There are so many different factors as far as, you know, we, what we talked about, you know, where you position the weight and the limits of the tow vehicle and all these other things. You have to take all of this stuff into consideration. Because, you know, towing is one of those things, it's so simple, it's so straightforward until it's not. And when it's not, man, it's a problem. So it pays to do your homework, to do your research, and set everything up ahead of time. It's the best way to keep everything shiny side up and out of the ditch. All right, so I know this was like a really long rambling video. I went all over the place with this, but, but I hope I put a couple of kernels of thought in your head so that next time you consider hooking up a trailer and heading down the road, you've at least covered a few different bases that you may not have before. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.